We're back with State Representative Jahan Gordon of the 92nd District, and we're talking about state finances. Jahan, right before we took the break, we were talking about the governor's cuts, and you agreed that some cuts are necessary somewhere. What do you, is there anything, first of all, that the governor has proposed cutting that you mm -hmm. think you can live with? You know, this past year, if you'd allow me to take a step back for a moment, um, the, the Illinois House of Representatives in a bipartisan fashion came together to work on a, um, a balanced budget, a comprehensive budget that would do as much as humanly possible to take care of um, the necessities of the state to really put money where we get great return on investment, and that's in areas of um, community-based programming. So we did that over the past year, and the governor unfortunately put forth a proposal that would spend an additional two million dollars, two billion dollars that the state unfortunately just doesn't have. Uh, the Senate came forth with a proposal that spent an additional billion dollars that the state doesn't have. The Illinois House of Representatives. Republicans as well as Democrats came together to work on a came together to work on a budget that made a lot of cuts, you know, over a billion dollars in cuts. And a billion dollars in a state operational budget, it's real money. Um, some of the things that were proposed in Governor Quinn's budget when he made his announcement, some of the things were proposed for cuts like the um, prescription drug program for our seniors, the uh, the community care line, the um, circuit breaker program. These are all programs that were going to see huge cuts if, if not eliminated. And these were things that we were able to save within our budget, spending $2 billion less, but at the same time making sure that there was an emphasis on the areas of areas like education, human, um, human service programs, so that we can keep the fabric of our society um, to cohesive. Clarify, to clarify, you're now talking about last spring's cuts, correct? This, we're talking about FY12, fiscal year 12's budget that we're okay. operating under right now that did not start until July 1st of this year. Right, okay. So you were not talking about the governor's last announcement of cuts. Right, but the last, okay. his last announcement of cuts is for the FY12, is yes, effective for yes. the FY12 okay. budget. Okay, um, what solutions to finding these cuts would be easiest on the residents of Illinois? Well, I think that when we get back to fall veto session, when we're all together, we can begin to sit down and work on a comprehensive plan that will allow all of us to support the, um, to support the communities that are, that are going to be most affected by the potential closures mm -hmm. as well as the layoffs. So just because I am a, rep a representative from Peoria doesn't mean that I am not very much so concerned about the closure in Rockford and in Tinley Park and uh, in Lincoln. I want to make sure that I do what I can to support those communities as well as the representatives who have been elected to serve those communities because if we all view this as we're all in this together, we will find ways to work together because for, by the grace of God, it wasn't our community who was faced with a closure such as that. So being very specific about how we can work together, as I, as I said before, we're going to veto session on October 24th. There, has, there have actually already been meetings that have been set forth for the downstate caucus because many of the, uh, many of the proposals that were, the proposal, excuse me, that was put forth many of the communities that are going to be affected by those proposals are all downstate communities outside of the Tinley Park community. Uh, if, we look, if we look at the proposal that uh, Governor Quinn put forth in, I believe it was early this summer, June or July, mm -hmm. when there was $386 million mm -hmm. that, was line, that was line item vetoed out of the budget that we passed. Many of those vetoes have an abundant effect on downstate communities. The regional superintendents, yeah. huge impact downstate. $100 million out of transportation, huge impact downstate. So overwhelmingly, from the $386 million that he line item vetoed out of the budget, the $55 million that, he's gonna, that he proposes to save by closing seven facilities, laying off 2,000 people, I think that there has to be a better way. Okay. We're going to take a break now for a message from our sponsors, but first, here is the Peorian's own literary and culinary editor,
Kevin Kaiser. Hi, I'm Kevin Kaiser, the literary and culinary guy at the Purian, and this week we have all kinds of literary goodness going on. First off, let's talk film adaptations of classic novels, because there are a couple great ones going on right now. The first is the film adaptation of Jack Kerouac's classic On the Road. For decades, various directors, screenwriters, and actors have tried to make this film, but the nonlinear structure, along with Kerouac's flowing prose style, really makes it almost unfilmable, in my opinion, but they're giving it the real college effort. Uh, the film is being directed by Walter Salas, and the screenplay was written by Jose Rivera, who also wrote The Motorcycle Diaries. Cast in the roles of Dean Moriarty, a.k.a. Neil Cassidy, and Sal Paradise, a.k.a. Jack Kerouac, are two relatively unknown actors, Garrett Hedlund and Sam Riley. The film also stars Kristen Stewart, and thank goodness, because now every time they'll mention the movie, we will have to be reminded of the Twilight franchise, so thanks for that. Uh, another semi-classic being turned into a film is Hunter S. Thompson's The Rum Diary, and that stars, surprise, Johnny Depp as Hunter S.'s character. It also stars Aaron Eckhart, Amber Heard, and Giovanni Ribisi. The story, which is much more straightforward and filmable as opposed to Kerouac's, concerns a rundown newspaper in the Caribbean and the American journalist struggling there. This film is slated for a late October release, and I, for one, am looking forward to it. Now to the culinary side of things. Kaiser Party 4 is blowing up. We've had great feedback from everyone and we'll be visiting even more restaurants soon. If there's a restaurant you would like us to preview or if you want to be one of the three diners that joins me for a Kaiser Party 4, send me an email at kevin at adcoagency.com or post a comment on the website. Well, that's all for the literary and culinary side of things. Now, go watch some commercials, maybe get some orange juice, have a little breakfast. It's Sunday. 